Uh, welcome, Kathy. Uh, are you are you in Hollywood? Uh, I'm near Hollywood in uh, in Los Angeles. Yes, yes. Okay. And um, uh, so, well, you're you're our kind of closing act. Uh, a Hollywood ending. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Um, so, uh, well, I, I'm sort of more or less going to hand over to you. I don't want to take up time with me talking there. We want to get get into the signs. So this is uh, uh, this is my book, Hollywood Signs. It just came out um, a f in the fall. And I've actually taken a sign design, a sign painting class at L.A. Uh, Trade Tech College and loved it. I had so much fun. Uh, and I've been inspired by everything I've seen in the magazine. So I'm really thrilled to be here and part of this uh, day. I just wanted to mention just specifically about the book, there is some uh, hand lettering in the book that Hollywood came, the word Hollywood came from a um, uh, an advertisement for the Knickerbocker uh, Hotel here in Hollywood. And signs, the word signs is from a typeface I created based on an old motel sign. So um, there is on the cover even just some lettering. And um, I'm just uh, uh, thrilled to have been able to um, compile all this history of Hollywood together. So I'm just going to jump in. Here we are at the, the Hollywood sign, which is celebrating its um, 100th anniversary this year. Um, they're, they're, been some events around it and and uh extra attention and i i don't know if if most people re probably realize that uh this was originally it originally read hollywood land and it was a, a real estate sign uh up in the hollywood hills and eventually um has of course become a worldwide icon celebrating um uh, the idea of hollywood and and the fact is that it's kind of one of the it's kind of the only icon that we could think of that is actually lettering. Like we have the Eiffel Tower and the Statue of Liberty, you know, and uh, Taj Mahal, like worldwide icons. But here in Los Angeles, we just, we have letters. Um, so that's kind of a cool thing. But there were other Hollywood signs um, in the hills before the, before the Hollywood sign. The neighborhood of Whitley Heights was, uh, this was actually the first sign up in the hills advertising the Whitley Heights neighborhood and um this is 1920 and I have another view of it from behind and uh so this was uh designed to be seen as far as Wilshire Boulevard which is a few miles away from Hollywood um and it was the first electrified sign and it was called a monster sign in the in the uh in the in the press and we have a few others that were also that are also sort of lost to time because of course these were meant to be temporary signs the outpost sign is uh there's a great story here that uh this is also in another neighborhood in the hollywood hills a little bit uh west of the hollywood sign and this was a giant neon sign. It was originally in green neon. And the sign was sort of forgotten. It was turned off during the um, blackout time of the, during World War II. And uh, there were city ordinances about lights. So the sign went off and then it actually crumpled into the hillside and a, a, some hikers found it about 20 years ago. Uh, realized this big pile of steel was actually the outpost sign. So it exists in, in some way, um, um, but you can see the size of it. And um, I just also love the, uh, the the particular lettering style on this sign. Another sign that's even more rare is the, um, this is for the Vinecrest neighborhood in Hollywood. And this, uh, they just did a big V and the, the advertising at the time told people to just drive up to the V. And here's a, Closer view, you can see the scale of it. The Bryn Mawr is a neighborhood now known as the Hollywood Dell. And I actually lived on uh, in this neighborhood one, uh, when I first moved to Los Angeles. Um, so this is in Hollywood also. And the last one is the Tryon Ridge, which was painted into the hills. And this was known as the Acropolis of Hollywood. Uh, it was interesting how each neighborhood came up with their own angle but you can see the the hills there's hollywood and um if we go 
a little further uh, in, into the middle of the photograph, you see the big V. Um, and that's just north of Hollywood and Vine. The Dias building here is now the Broadway building. And if we look further over, we can see the Bryn Mawr sign all the way on the, on the uh, left. So you can imagine, you know, just these signs dotting the hills, uh, um, pretty amazing. I wanted to turn to another icon now, the Grumman's Chinese Theater. I have some theater uh, signs to show you and then uh, a little uh, story about a sign that I worked on. So Grumman's Chinese Theater, it's almost a hundred years old and the original signage was very modest. Sid Grumman thought that people were going to the movies or to the theater because he had uh, stage shows before the, originally had stage shows before the movie. And it wasn't so much about the movie playing. So they didn't have a big marquee originally um, at his theaters um, advertising what theater, uh, what movie was playing. So originally the lettering was very, very simple. And then the Cinemascope era uh, became all about the signage. And uh, this is, I, I think we forget because we don't have so many illuminated neon signs anymore, we forget how incredible they were and how magical and um, how they really, you know, they lit up the streets uh, with a warm glow that we don't really have much anymore. And I, I've heard the previous uh, couple of speakers talk about saving signs and, and it is our cultural, shared cultural heritage. And um, I, I, am very passionate about it as well. So uh, we always, in a, in the group I'm in, Signs United, we always talk about sort of supporting businesses that are, you know, like go in and buy a t-shirt or have a meal at a place where, you know, they've obviously um, taken pains to uh, uh, restore or, or keep their neon signs. So um, I'll just play this one more time. It's so amazing, magical. So that was a lighted bulb sign, neon, the whole works. Um, and here's another version of this cinemascope, uh, it was a trestle across the forecourt. And of course the, the famous Grumman's footprints are right below there. The next era of signage at Grumman's is maybe the most familiar to a lot of people and the, the neon dragons. I still sort of, uh, I can't believe that they're not here. They are here, um, but they're not on the facade of the theater anymore. But this was such an amazing, you know, I have other details of. Here's a, a sort of daylight shot with the neon illuminated. Um, they were they were 40 feet long and, uh, and the neon animated, just beautiful, which we'll see in one second. So the, so the signs, the, the signs, uh, the, neon, the neon dragons came down in 2000 and um, they were eventually both were saved and one was restored by the uh, Museum of Neon Art here in Los Angeles, which is a great place to visit if, uh, if you're, if you're in this, uh, you know, visiting um, LA. And um, we are thrilled that they still exist here in LA because they're, they're so beloved. Um, so it's really nice to be able to visit visit them, uh, visit one of them. Um, if, this is the East Dragon. The West Dragon is in um, the Los Angeles uh, Museum of Natural History in their, in their um, uh, historical collection. This has been beautifully restored by a team of experts who, who are just did an incredible job. So Sid Groman, before the Chinese theater opened, his first theater on Hollywood Boulevard was the Egyptian theater, which um, you may have been hearing about recently because it, it uh, Netflix bought the theater, did a complete restoration and it had just opened a few months ago. And I, I've been able to uh, see a movie there and it was just incredible. Here in LA, we've, we have during COVID, uh, the uh, Egyptian theater shut down, the Vista and the Cinerama theater um, all shut down and luck and there have been wonderful restorations on the Egyptian and the um, Vista, Quentin Tarantino just reopened that and the cinema, Cinerama is supposed to open next year. So we're, we're, you know, fingers are crossed, but we're really happy to have, uh, start having theaters come back. 
um, this is the, uh, the the thing I wanted to mention about Grauman's is that the the when they took the neon signs, the neon dragons down, they the idea was to bring it back to the original facade from the 1920s. And um, a similar thing has sort of happened at Grumman's Egyptian. Um, so this is how it originally looked in the 1920s. They did add a very large uh, vertical sign uh, soon after opening, um, this was done by the, uh, the Neal brothers. And this is one of my favorite signs, the, the tile work. Um, of course, the lettering is amazing. I love that Groman's is huge. And then Egyptian is really tiny because, uh, of course, as I mentioned before, the idea was that it was a Groman's theater. Uh, but eventually the need what became clear as it did at the, at the Chinese theater um, that you know they needed to have a marquee and 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 share what was <laughs> what was playing and and um uh so this is the first sort of major uh trestle marquee that uh appeared on the at at the again at the fork at the front of the forecourt um at the sidewalk um uh, just like the uh chinese theater the on the left there, you can see the corner of a another vertical sign that was put up. That you can see the A and the N, and we'll see that again in a few minutes. So this is sort of 30s, late 30s. Just as Neon came to the Chinese theater, Neon also came to the Egyptian theater, and this giant cement facade was built at the street level. And I just, it, it was animated. Um, all the, uh, horizontal stripes were animated. The script was animated. It was really incredible. Um, and we can see, I just love this publicity photo of the ladies like on their heels, uh, <laughs> high heels on top of that ladder checking on the neon. But it, I mean, just the fact that that was a publicity photo just shows how impressive the facade was it was just really beautiful um and it was a very big deal when oklahoma came to it was a multicolored theater sign facade uh almost like a big giant electric poster so when netflix took over they uh the america's cinematech had res done a restoration on the egyptian around 2000 um, and they recreated this uh vertical sign that i mentioned before and then netflix kept the sign and then just added their Netflix red background. So we are lucky to have it back. And here's a little animation of it, sort of illuminating Hollywood Boulevard again. The Earl Carroll Theater also has really fascinating story. Um, I'm gonna go through quickly. This is on Sunset Boulevard. This is 1940 um, and, or 1938 it opened. Um, and Earl Carroll uh, was a sort of Broadway impresario and he brought the show to LA after opening a theater in, in New York City. The sign on the front is a neon portrait of his companion and she was also a dancer, Beryl Wallace. And around her neon portrait, uh, reads the words, uh, through these portals past the most beautiful girls in the world. So one of my favorite things about this, it's sort of a little known thing, is that they rigged the letters to read uh, on a timer, eat at the theater. So uh, that will become clearer in a second. Eat at the theater. So very clever use of signage. And I think we can jump to the, oops, there's the, there's the night view. We're going to see what happened to the theater over the years, but it's still there. And a developer is um, uh, supposed to bring this facade back um, to the way, the way it was originally, which everyone is super excited about. So in the theater, I just want to mention is the goddess of light. You can see in the photo on the left, she originally had this like swirl of neon 
and then the neon continued all the way through the theater that sort of um the sort of vertical curtain of neon um went all the way through the theater up to the stage and i took a tour of the theater about five or six years ago and was just amazed that she's still there um and hopefully that neon will will come back someday as well and uh so the the theater then became the uh, moulin rouge um and they kept the same style lettering added more signage as you can see but beryl wallace still stayed uh, on the theater until uh the 60s so in the 60s we have the age of aquarius this is where hair played for about almost three years in los angeles uh, in the late sixties and the art collective, the fool that worked with the Beatles on their psychedelic era came to Los Angeles and created this incredible, incredible mural, um, on the building. And as much as I love all the neon and the signage that preceded this, I also, I, this is just a masterpiece as well in the film, once upon a time in Hollywood, Quentin Tarantino recreated a lot of signage on Hollywood Boulevard and here on Sunset. Um, if you if you watch the film, um, you'll see a lot of incredible signs from Hollywood. And he actually had this recreated. It didn't appear in the film, but it's still on Sunset Boulevard. We're waiting the Earl Carroll, the new Earl Carroll era. But in the meantime, we get to have this and it's just amazing to time travel every day by passing by this. I'm going to go really quickly. I'll just show these images very quickly. Um, Hollywood, the Hollywood era of bowling signs. This building is still there. I just, this was the uh, Warner Brothers executive building. And I just love how they like outline the columns in neon that animated uh, the, uh, the bowler uh, bowling pins and the bowling ball. And then Gruen time also appears on signage, signage throughout Hollywood. It's Gruen time. It's time to bowl. So it's really extraordinary. This is another favorite. Also Gruen watch time, time to bowl. This um, uh, was on Hollywood Boulevard and just, you could do anything. <laughs> there's like a, there's a rumpus room and it's, you could buy a gift and send it out and you can get your hair cut. And, but the, the great thing is that there was a like a women's bowling alley upstairs that they could practice their bowling during the day and not be quote embarrassed by their uh low scores um just a little sign of the times there but again animated beautiful uh neon this sign i'm just close up this is hollywood and vine there's the broadway hollywood which is hollywood and vine so this is just south of there and I love the signage that says air conditioned. Here is a quick animation. It might be a little bit hard to see. Just amazing. Uh, and this, uh, this sign you might remember from the Big Lebowski. And this, here's a close up of Oops, of the star, really incredible. Um, and this I wish had been immortalized in a movie. Um, I, this is one of my favorites. I just love that. Everything about this here, I have a little animation and I'll come back to it of the, um, of Hollywood. It just, it's dazzling. There we go. And I just love this. It's, it's sort of, uh, amazing the the signage on the building is amazing enough with that script and the sort of mid-century feel of the billiards um and the stars and then we have this big uh you know these giant like googie style like bowl um can't miss it um and i just have a few googie style coffee sh whoops here we go googie coffee shops to show this is one of my favorite signs it actually has been recreated by the museum. The, the car hop has been recreated by the um, Museum of Neon Art. And it's uh, you can see the car hop over at Universal City Walk here in LA. 
Um, but I just love the combination of the bulb sign, the neon, the typography is, you know, um, it's, I mean, who wouldn't stop here and <laughs> have some, have a sandwich, but this was the era in, um, Los Angeles mostly and, and it, it influenced across the country, but like sort of googie, um, uh, style, organic, exuberant coffee shops, bowling alleys, um, uh, motels, sort of reflecting the car culture, getting people to people's attention quickly by being so bold and imaginative, getting people's attention. So they'll stop and pull over. Here's another favorite Carolina Pines, Jr. Coffee Dan's. Uh, do pars. This was on Hollywood and Vine. And I just love that the original signage was pretty conservative. And then they went sort of, they went to a little bit of a googie sign with that big arrow and the, and the Sputnik that spun and uh, you can see that illuminated at night. And here's a little gem that was right next to the um, Chinese theater. Atop it, we have this really cool sign with really uh, wonderful lettering. This was designed by, uh, done by Heath and Company, which, which was a uh, important sign company here in Los Angeles in the in mid-century. And I'm just gonna close with a little sign story of my own. This motel, the Coral Isle, it was original, originally called, uh, is on Hollywood Boulevard. And once upon a time um, in Hollywood, uh, there were dozens of little kind of mom and pop motels that you know, you'd know you see across the country. And there were a lot of them, of course, in Hollywood because of all the uh, tourism and uh, vacationers here. Um, every one of them in the advertising says, in the heart of Hollywood. So later it became the Downtowner Motel. It's still here. And I was driving by one day and saw this and I thought the sign was coming down. And as I mentioned previously, it's so upsetting when you see a, you know, a sign coming down. I was like, that's one of my favorites. I hope we don't lose that. So it turned out that they, they were just um, fixing the sign. They were restoring it. And um, I spoke with the manager and he said he was looking for a graphic designer. Uh, so I, uh, to, to fill in that oval, so I went to work, all those sort of planets aligned with this. I found on eBay a matchbook cover. I haven't seen that before or since. And I, I scour eBay for everything Hollywood. Uh, so this was, this was a matchbook cover from the sister motel to the downtowner in Hollywood. And um, so I was able to take that type, the beautiful hand done type, and bring it back to the downtown or put it on their sign. Here's another view of it. I think we have a, yeah. So they, they redo the neon in LED um, animated. You can see it for blocks away, um, which was the point after all. And um, I just am thrilled to be a little part of that uh, Hollywood story. So um, that's it for me. I thank you so much for uh, for this. I hope I hope uh, I hope you enjoyed a little trip to Hollywood. A lot of, uh, a lot of love for those pictures uh, in the chat, um, which I'll I'll leave open. In fact, I think I, I get to to save a copy of it at some point. Um, thank you so much, Kathy. Uh, I've put a link uh, to where people can get your book and find your website, social media, and so on into the into the chat. Um, thank you. There is a uh, a question here from Leo. Um, was going right back to the some of the first signs you sent, the real estate ones. Um, I mean, I, was there any? particular reason that they you know that they chose to make the signs uh so huge and kind of so widespread so they they actually they um it was very smart because they were advertising uh 
these new developments in the hills, this is in the 1920s. So we're just, they're just getting electricity into those neighborhoods. Um, and um, they were uh, hoping to attract people from miles away by using the, everything in front of the hills is flat. So by putting those signs up in the hills, they were, they were giant billboards. Yeah. And um, it, you know, what, why, why did the Hollywood, Hollywood one survive? And well, obviously it's incomplete, but you know, how come that came to be the only one that, that endured? That's a great question. There's, um, uh, it, it sort of became, there was an affection for it. Um, and um, every time it, it it actually disintegrated over the years, it was it was uh, um, uh, the the word land came off around 1949 when there was there was and people wanted it to stay because uh, at the same time those developments were happening that of course the film industry was um, um, making Hollywood a famous place. So the fact that the sign said Hollywood, um, people, people, uh, it be, started becoming a tourist thing, and um, and people in the neighborhood wanted to preserve it. So um, and there's famous story of in the 1978, uh, and that which is the picture that I showed was the big celebration of the sign actually being completely recreated, and um, and then there was like a network TV special celebrating it and. Um, so, um, uh, and that was, it was actually recreated by Heath and company, the sign company I mentioned before. So, uh, what you're seeing now is a sign that was done in 1978 and it's meant to last, you know, for hundreds of years. The year I was born. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, well, like the, the, uh, the, the, the one story someone once shared with me, and I can't remember the BT artist's name, but there was, uh, there was somebody that went and on the, on the bottom of the two L's um, put up a, a bit of a graffiti piece on there. Um, there have been a number of uh, <laughs> instances when the sign has been altered. Um, the first one was um, Hollyweed. Um, and, uh, that actually has happened a couple of times. Um, but yeah, through the years, there've been political statements and all, yeah, all, all sorts of things. Uh, the security is apparently very tight at the sign now. So that is probably going to happen less and less. Um, but it's all, always... um, they had a webcam. They were, they were re, what were they doing? Were they repainting it? And they had a kind of live, a live stream. They did. They were repainting it for the, uh, hundredth and for the centennial um and uh they did have a live stream and uh it's it's pretty cool it's pretty cool and uh, just a, a kind of you know a word on the on the book because you know I, I i've done a couple of books and i know you know what goes into into one of those and um this is you know it's easy for people to underestimate it i mean you, you've got in your book you know a bit, a bit like my one on ghost signs you know these 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 stories and histories of each of the signs can, can you talk a little bit about the experience of you know researching those and and, and uncovering the uh, the backstories of these of these pieces of work um we I lived in Hollywood at the time and I became, I'm always interested in the history of where I live. I mean, it, since I was a kid. Um, so I, I uh, lived in Hollywood and I started getting very curious about, you know, what happened to that building and what happened to, I saw, I started notice signs actually coming down. Um, this is about 20 years ago. And um, uh, so I just started researching. I started looking online that the Los Angeles Public Library has an incredible collection of uh, images. And um, uh, I started collecting vintage images and I just started putting together the story about what it once looked like. To, you know, the, what it once was driving down Hollywood Boulevard was this just beautiful sea of neon. Um, so I uh, have a... Um, I, I think we all in probably in this group have a um, interest in in uh, things of the past and an ins inspiration of things in the past. Uh, when you know every neon sign was a handmade work of art. Um, so uh, 
uh, the more and more I researched, the more I wanted to tell a story. Um, and uh, well, and, uh, maybe a closing question. Can you tell us about the pieces that you're sitting that are sitting behind you? <laughs> so this is another inspiration. These are, uh, yes, these are, uh, they're silk screened uh, signs. They're from a diner in Canada from um, uh, the 40s. 50s. Um, and uh, I, I just, they inspire me. I've, I've created signs that uh, in my design work that have uh, are inspired by these. Um, I love the illustrations. They're just, um, uh, they're so happy and positive. And that's kind of um, why I love that era too, the sort of mid-century era. It's really uh, exuberant um, and inspiring. So I love having these around and getting, um, they make me smile. Glad, I'm glad, I'm glad uh, others are interested in them too. <laughs> thank you. Um, well, um, well, Kathy, just to say, just to say thank you. And, um, and uh, we really appreciate um, your time. Um, and uh, I've, I've recorded the session, but I'll share it with you first and, um, and see if, uh, you're happy for that to be shared uh, online uh, after the event. Well, thank you. I, I've been inspired by what I've heard so far, and I can't wait to go back and see the other recordings from from overnight. And uh, congratulations to you. This is an incredible marathon, and and uh, uh, thank you for putting it together. Well, I've made it to the finish line now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to be a part of it. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks very much, Kathy.